This is part two of making circular designs with Adobe Illustrator. I know at the end of part one I said that I was going to break this uh, lesson up into two parts, but after reviewing all the things I want to do, I think I'm going to break it up into even more parts. So let's review. A lot of what I did in the first part of the tutorial was to take basic shapes with uh, color blending modes on them and rotating them around. So let's review that. This petal shape, which is just a modified ellipse, already has a color dodge uh, blending mode applied to it. So I've got it selected, so select the artwork, get your rotate tool, hold down your option button, and choose your pivot point. I'm going to pick mine, not at the very end, but up a little bit like that. And that will bring up my dialog box. So I've picked my pivot point. I've got my rotate dialog box. And now I'm going to enter in a degree that I want to rotate it by. And again, it's always good to rotate your motif by a number that divides evenly into 360 if you're making a circular design. OK, now I'll say copy. And then I will go up to object, transform, transform again, keyboard shortcut D, which is what I'll be using from here on out to continue rotating my motif around that same pivot point until I've got my design made. So there's one design. I'm going to select this. So this is the exact same motif or shape that I used for that design. This time what I'm going to do is I will do the exact same thing except for I'm going to rotate it from the other end. So we'll go up a little bit from the bottom here. Choose 18 degrees again. Say copy. And then transform again, Command D, to continue rotating that motif, copying and rotating that motif around the same pivot point until I've got this design. So the thing that I wanted to do in addition to reviewing was just to show you that depending on where you pick your pivot point to rotate it, you can get a totally different design from the same piece of artwork. OK, so now let's start building up custom shapes to make our motifs. So I've got this circle and this diamond. I'm going to select them both. And I can go up here to my align tools. If they're not showing, I can always get the align palette from going to window, align, and you can get your align panel, whichever works for you. So I'm going to align along the center. And let's make sure that they're vertically aligned center. There we go. So now they're lined up. And now that I have them uh, lined up the way I want them to, and uh, they're overlapping and they're both selected, I can get my shape builder tool. And if I know I want this all merged together, I can hold down my shift button which will allow me to window select and everything in that selection will be merged together. So again, the shape builder, which normally is going to, if you just click and drag, is going to draw this line. If you hold on your shift button, it'll let you make this uh, rectangular marquee window that you can select stuff with. Okay. So let's see, this has no blending mode on it. So I'm going to put something on it, perhaps a, uh, let's try a difference blending mode. And I have it selected, get my rotate tool, oops, sorry, get my rotate tool, hold down my alt button or my option button, and that will allow me to choose my pivot point, get the rotate dialog box. This time I think I'll try 15 degrees, check and uncheck it. And if I'm happy with that, I'll just say copy. And then I will continue rotating it around by using the transform again command, which is command D. So then you have another design. I'm going to just select this all and go to Object, Group, or Command G, and make a group out of it. OK, so, so far, pretty much all the designs I've done have relied on blending modes to create their visual interest. Um, well, that's great. They do have some limitations. The very thing that makes them interesting can also make them hard to work with when we want to incorporate them into other designs. So if I make this uh, box here, this blue box, and I copy over our design we just made by holding down the Option button, dragging it over on top of the box, I better change that stacking order. So I'm going to just click on my blue box here, right click on it, go to Arrange, send it back. There we go. All right, so you can see that. Because the blending mode on the different elements of my design, um, it continues to keep blending with everything that it's overlapping. So that's cool if that's what you want. But if you want it to just look the way it is when you first made it, we're going to have to flatten its transparency. So let me just show you a little bit about that. So I'm going to 
copy our motif one more time without the box. Okay, so there's our design as we created it. I'm going to select it. Remember, it's all grouped together. So if I look at my look at my appearance panel, I can see it's a group. So now I'm going to go to Object, Flatten Transparency. I'm just going to say OK here. It no longer has any blending mode in it. It's been uh, flattened or expanded to the way it looked with the blending mode, but n it no longer has any blending modes on it. So if I double click to go into this group, into isolation mode, you can see that it's been divided into shapes based on the way it overlapped. And those shapes are colored without any transparency based on the way it looked with the blending mode. So that is flattening the transparency. Now let's go over to this one. So this copy of it is overlapping this uh, blue box. And you can see that it continues to interact with these uh, green areas. But if I select just the design without selecting the box, and I go to Object, Flatten Transparency, say OK, it flattens the transparency just like our first one was flattened, the same colors, so it did not take into account the overlap it had with that box. So it looks exactly the same as this one, even though at the time that I uh, flattened the transparency, it was overlapping this blue box. Because the blue box was not selected, it did not take that into account when it flattened the transparency. So let's do this third one. This time I'm going to select both the group with our design as well as the blue box. Now when I go to Object, Flatten Transparency, say OK, you can see that uh, this is all grouped together. So I'll double click to go into isolation mode, right? And now I'm inside that group. And now you can see that it has uh, broken this all up into shapes based on the way they overlap and the way that they looked with the transparency, with that blending mode. But everything's been kind of chopped up and flattened out, including that blue rectangle. So flattening transparency. Make it the way it looks. OK, so let's just do a little bit more in this vein. So here I have this uh, Pentagon with a uh, hard light blending mode on it. So if you divide 360 into 5, that's 72. So let me go ahead here to my Rotate tool. I'm going to hold down my Option button, select the very tippy point there, say 72, say Copy, and uh, Command-D to transform again it all the way around Set up that design and I could go ahead and uh, make a circle it's gonna eyeball it remember option to draw a circle from the center or any shape from the center shift to make sure it's a perfect circle and I can just pull it out there again I'm just gonna eyeball that something like this and let me swap that there we go select all that get my beloved uh, shape Builder tool, hold down Option to make it a shape killing tool. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Okay, let's start working on the idea of building up motifs with multiple shapes to making a uh, to making a new circular design. So here I've got that same pentagon with this kind of petal motif, and I'll just select them both. Get my rotate tool. Hold down my Option button, click at the bottom. I'll just stick with the 72, say Copy, Transform again, Command-D. There we go. So you can see that you get a different effect by having multiple objects kind of together. And so along with that, I'll show you this. So this right here is a group. And inside that group, I have this uh, petal shape with a gradient in it, and I have this piece back here, and I've got these little uh, stroked open paths that have gradient strokes on them to kind of give it a little bit of flower veiny kind of look. Let me double click off to the side to get out of that group. So now with that selected, I can go ahead and get my rotate tool, hold down option, choose my pivot point. Let's go with five again, or 72 degrees to make five copies. Copy it, Command D, like that. Now I'll just get my circle tool and uh, Make sure that's not selected there. Get my circle tool. So my color swatches, I'll take like a yellow or something. And go to the center of my flower design. Hold down Option. Pull out 
in the center, hold down shift to make that a perfect circle, and make sure to release your left mouse button before you release either the option or the shift when you're doing that. There we go, so then there's my basic flower design, okay? So we reviewed the basic technique, flattening blending modes, a little bit on as far as building up multiple elements to make your motif to build up a design. So let's continue with that. Okay, so what I have here is this petal motif, right? Which you can see has some effects on it. It's got a fill with a gradient, then it's got another fill on it that has an inner glow with a lower opacity, and it's got a stroke on it. And then I also have this group, which has some different shapes that uh, I built up with the Shape Builder tool and, and made that motif. And that is, uh, has an inner glow effect on it as well. Okay, so if I go ahead and just line them up like that. So I just happen to know that this petal shape is a 20 degree angle. I'm gonna go ahead and get my rotate tool with it selected, not, not the blue motif, just the petal with the uh, gradient and such on it. Hold down my option button down here at the tip. So if it's 20 degrees and I rotate it by 30 degrees or 10 degrees more than I know that slices, I should get a little gap between the copies. So I'll say copy. Then I'll use my transform again, Command D, to continue it all the way around like that. Then I'm going to select all of them. So, oops, I got my little blue motif here. So I'll just hold down Shift and click on it to take that out of my selection group. So just my petals are selected. And then I'll go up to Object Group. And now I've got these petals all grouped together. Now with them selected, I can get my Rotate tool. And I don't mind the pivot point being in the middle, so I'll just hit Return. That'll give me my dialog box. So if I had rotated each of these by 30 degrees, uh, if I was to rotate them by half of that, or 15 degrees, and then say Copy, you can see that it kind of filled in the gaps. Okay. Now let's deselect that. Let's select my blue motif, get my rotate tool, go to the center of our little flower here, hold down option, click. This time I think I'm going to go with, um, I'll try like 60 degrees, I think I want. Sure. I'll copy that. Transform again to continue rotating it. There we go. Okay, so now that I've rotated my blue motif around. Let me just go ahead and select all of them and group them together just to make it a little bit easier to deal with. So let me go to Object, Group. So now that's a group. So now I have this group, this group, and this group. Let me go ahead and fill in the center. Now I could use just a circle, but I don't want to. I'm gonna try using a rounded rectangle. So Remember that if I'm dragging out a round rectangle and I use my up and down arrows, the up arrow will increase my radius on the corners and my down arrow will decrease the radius on my corners. So I want a pretty good sized radius. And if I make a real narrow box, it'll look something like a popsicle stick. Get my rounded rectangle again. So I want to make sure it fills in that gap. So let's just do this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So since I have the blues grouped and these petals all grouped and I have this popsicle stick right there in the middle, I can select all of them and use my faithful align tools to just make sure they're all stacked up tidily like that. There we go. And let's go ahead and rotate this now. So now that I know it's all centered, I can just go ahead and get my rotate tool and hit return, because I don't mind having the uh, pivot point right in the middle of it. Let's go with 15 degrees, see what that looks like. All right, I'll go with it. Copy, Command D, to take it all the way around. Feel like that. Now I can select all of these guys. So one of the nice things about having all those other shapes as a group, if I just window select so everything's selected, I can then just say, hold down shift and 
get those other groups out of my selection set so just my new shapes are selected and I'm going to go ahead now and get my shape builder tool. Now I, I know I could do this with my pathfinders, but I've been really playing up the uh, shape builder lately. I'm going to hold down my shift button to draw a box around this. And now I'll just do that and that'll merge all those shapes together as such. And let's go to my swatches and find that. So perhaps this. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our um, layers panel here. So here's that path I just made, and there's my group. So I could just drag this down so it's behind the blues, or I could also um, right click or say arrange, bring forward, arrange, send backwards, or I can use my command in my brackets right here to do that as well. Okay. So that's looking pretty good other than I don't really like it poking out right there. So maybe I will scale this down slightly and I will hold option as I do that so that it scales from the center. Let's see, hold down shift if I want to make sure I don't distort it. Something like, okay. So the idea of this installment of the circular design lesson was flattening transparencies and then building up different motifs and combining them into one circular path. The next installment will be based on open stroke paths and rotating those around and then using the shape builder tool to build those into circular designs. All right, keep a lookout for it.